When Holly Gleason started writing about country music for the Miami Herald as a college sophomore, she had no idea where it would lead. She didn't have a clue she'd be on the road with Neil Young at 20, chase Merle Haggard around America for spin, or in the studio with the nitty gritty dirt band for their second Will the Circle Be Unbroken. She didn't know she'd write regularly for Rolling Stone, the Los Angeles Times, Cream, Musician, Tower Pulse, Playboy, Oxford American, or do a cover story on Dolly Parton for the Saturday Evening Post and be a featured editor for hits. Holly moved to Nashville to start a country bureau for the magazine and left to head the media and artist development department at Sony Nashville. Two years later, she opened Joe's Garage, Music City's first boutique artist development and media relations firm, where she played an instrumental role in the careers of Kenny Chesney, Patti Loveless, Brooks and Dunn, Leanne Womack, John Prine, and Rodney Crowell. Since then, Holly has written songs. Better is the memory, a two-week number one voted I Wish I Wrote That Song by the NSAI and To Watch Maria Dance, one of three new songs on Guy Clark, Best of the Dual Tone Years. She earned a master's in writing from Spalding University and teaches music criticism at MTSU. Her unbearable lightness of being Taylor Swift was nominated for Best Lifestyle Writing from the International Network of Street Papers. Most recently, she created and edited Women, Woman Walk the Line, How the Women of Country Music Changed Our Lives. The anthology won the Belmont Book Prize for ex Excellence in a Book About Country Music. Holly, we have a very special guest who'd like to congratulate you by video. Hey, Holly, I just wanted to say congratulations to you. You uh, mean so much to so many people. But to me personally, you have been a source of inspiration. You have been a voice of reason. You have been someone that has really pushed me creatively over the years and always. I mean, if there's one thing I can say about Holly Gleason is that she always had me reaching for something more and gave me also the confidence to do that. And I love you for it. You're an amazing person, you're an amazing creative spirit, and you inspire a whole lot of people, including me. All right, and I love you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage 2018 Swords Hall of Fame inductee Holly Gleason. Wow. Usually he's saying shut up and hanging up. So, that was pretty heavy. Um, when Martha Moore called me to tell me I had been voted into the Source Hall of Fame, I couldn't talk because this means a lot. And the women in this room have given a lot, many of them their entire lives. Music saved my life. I had what you would call a high-impact childhood, and on one really late, humid, horrible Cleveland night, I heard Bonnie Raitt sing Angel from Montgomery, and I knew the spaceship I had fallen out of wasn't coming back to get me. And it was okay, because through John Prine's words, I knew I wasn't alone. John Prine, Rodney Crowell, Amy Lou Harris, Bruce Springsteen, Jackson Brown, Alex Bevan. They told me that there were other people out there who felt what I felt. They desired what I desired, and they understood the disappointments I grappled with. It was empowering, and it was comforting, and it was like a whole new way of breathing. And when I met Vince Gill as a 17-year-old championship golfer 
who'd cracked up her hand and was going to lose 15 years of her life. The then lead singer of Pure Prairie League said, after being kidnapped for an interview at the St. Andrew's Bagpiper, you should write about music. I countered, I'm 17 and I look 12. He said Cameron Crow, and he forever changed my life. I've written for just about anybody whose check would clear the bank. <laughs> I have chased countless people across America, had Lou Reed walk out on me, wrote Steve Earle's first national magazine piece, and always there was music. I believe in larger narratives. People who work with me know that's one of the big questions I always ask. Um, when I was a rock critic, I cared about country because I wanted it in the larger narrative. And tonight, my larger narrative includes Mike Martinovich, who took a chance on a girl deemed not corporate enough and put me in at Sony Nashville. Um, Kay Smith, Debbie Fleischer, Arita Schneider, all fellow Source Hall of Fame inductees were really patient with something that was maybe a little bit of an amped up puppy that just wanted to do more. At that time, Donna Hilly, Helen Farmer, and Frances Preston were very generous with their time. Um, I've been blessed to be friends with and work with some of the greatest artists in the world. John Prine, whose um, lovely Irish bride Fiona is here. Um, Rodney Crowell, Emmylou Harris, um, Patty Loveless, who you got to see on the screen earlier, Brooks and Dunn, Montgomery Gentry, Leanne Womack, Ronnie Millsap. Um, I've worked with some of the greatest managers. Clint Hyam, he sent an entire table of hot young guys. Right? Look at them back there. Um, are you guys blushing yet? Look harder. Bert Stein, one of the most generous, wise people I've ever met. Um, Chuck Morris, the concert king of Colorado. The agents Rick, Rick Ship and Steve Dahl and Ken Levitan long before he was a manager. As Me Too and Time's Up loom so large, I looked at the names in this hall who've come in before I have, Louise Scruggs, Tootsie Betts, Maggie Cavender, Callie Corey, Mary Martin, Jan Ray, Gail Holcomb, Bonnie Garner, Evelyn Shriver, Mayborn and Axton, Liz Thiels, Judy Turner, Barbara Orbison, so many more who have paved the way. And if it wasn't for the source organization, we wouldn't be here. Looking at all these women who give up their lives so the music can happen. My dad always told me to know the history is to love golf more. And I believe that to consider the contribution of all these women is to recognize the real guts that drive this music. Music saved my life. Every day when I go to work, I believe the artists I write about and work with may change everything for someone I'll never meet. It's a precious responsibility and one I take very, some might say, too seriously. But when you look around this room, look at these incredible women, how could you do any less? So thank you very much for this honor, but really, it's been my privilege to serve the message. Thank you.